Hello traders, Gary Wagner here. It is 9 o'clock in Honolulu, 3 o'clock in New York on Friday. Happy Aloha Friday as we say on the islands. It is the 9th day of August 2024 and this is the evening report for gold and silver, our weekend review. An interesting week for gold with the decline that occurred throughout the beginning of the week, yesterday's tremendous $30 gain, and today we do have gold higher, up $5.90. That's about a quarter percent rise, taking the December contract to $2,469.30. When we look at a weekly chart, which I have just put up, what we can see is that gold had the highest opening value in history, opening up at the beginning of the week at $2,490 per ounce. It is trading softer on the week. It is down 50 cents from last week's close. Gold opened today at $2,490. It is currently at $2,467, meaning the gold declined by $33 from opening to current pricing. September silver is currently down by about five cents, taking the September contract to $27.56. The weekly candlesticks tell a slightly different story, opening on Monday at $28.67, currently at $27.56, meaning it has lost approximately $1 this week. The dollar index is currently down fractionally, down 0.04% taking the index to 102.97. The weekly candlesticks tell us a slightly different story. It traded lower on the week than last week, a lower low, a lower high, and a doji candle, meaning a virtually equal close. Traders, I'm extremely excited about where gold could go over the next three to four weeks. I'm basing that on our current Elliott wave count, in which we have just restarted the clock with our first wave one, a primary count. These are going to be subdivided to a fractal intermediate count underneath, meaning this is wave one and underneath is wave one, two, three, four, and five. This is our wave two. This is all part of wave three. I believe we are now on our third of five, making up our primary third wave. I believe that the termination of this primary third wave will be approximately $2,590 to $2,600. And that is simply based upon the Elliott wave rule that wave three cannot be the shortest of any of the three impulse waves. We will begin next week to look at this sub count behind it. I do believe that if this rally continues into next week and the following week, we should see gold break above at least 2520, this top that came in at the beginning of August. Traders, I will be going to the mainland over the weekend and return on Tuesday. During my absence, our trading team will be monitoring the market. We will continue to send out trade alerts when applicable. Our in-house analyst, Joseph Wagner, will do any special video updates if required. However, we will not be doing our standard video report on Monday and Tuesday. Our in-house analyst, Joseph Wagner, a more detailed look at silver with his current assessment of the silver market. By the end of the second quarter, the return for spot silver was 16.7% four times greater than gold's 4.3% in the second quarter. In fact, for the first half of 2024, silver shined brighter than all of the main global financial assets. However, in the third quarter, things changed. Silver peaked out after hitting approximately $32, while gold continued to make new all-time highs, a total of three for this entire year. The usual synchronicity between the two metals dissipated mid-July, and the sentiment between the two precious metals took a different course from that point on. To quickly illustrate how the market sentiment is different 
in both gold and silver. I have on top a silver futures chart and a gold futures chart on the bottom, both in weekly candlestick format. One indicator that I like to use is the Ichimoku cloud. Not only is the cloud important, this is the base and conversion line in blue and red, and these often represent support or resistance. If you notice, gold closed today above both of these lines, silver closing beneath both of them. If we change this to a one day candlestick chart, it's even more pronounced. Not only did gold close above the base and conversion line, and silver closed below the base in the conversion line. Also, the kumu or clouds indicate more bearish action ahead with red clouds into the future. More importantly, silver is beneath not only the conversion and baseline, but the cloud formation, while gold is above both of these technical indicators. Today, silver's third of a percent decline brought it to a closing price of $27.90. That equates to a 4% decline on the week. However, silver's decline may have come to an end because this week, silver may have found a bottom. Signs that this may have occurred appear when we do a simple Fibonacci retracement. The low on Wednesday and the open on Thursday happened right at around the 61% Fibonacci retracement, which is a very good indication that silver did find a bottom, especially since it traded off of it the following day. Also, that price point has historical significance, being a bottom in May, as well as a top in March. Why I also am assured that this is such a strong support level is it matches up with the 200 day moving average. You can tell by the 100 day moving average that our resistance is right at $29.50. A break above 28.30. I think we are going to at least 29.50. Again, I believe the bottom has been made in silver and we should see higher prices next week, especially if gold continues higher next week as the disconnect between the two metals, I feel has run its course. This has been Gary Wagner and Joseph Wagner wishing you as always good trading. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.